So today we're going to be looking at raptors. We're going to be defining what they are, maybe gaining a little more appreciation of the role that they play in the environment. Also curious, who here has seen an eagle maybe this week? Anybody? <laughs> hey, that's fantastic. Uh, my colleague and I went down to the dam yesterday. Just unbelievable what's right down the road and uh, pretty special to have. And we'll talk a little bit more about eagle populations. Maybe why is it that's so special to see them? Well, let's get started. First thing is that in the world there are over 10 thousand different kinds of birds in the world and here in North America we have about 925 different species of birds. Now we're going to look specifically at a group that we call raptor. Now the term raptor comes from rapare, a Latin word meaning to grab and to carry away. And these birds have three distinct characteristics that make them very different than other birds. I need your help. Can somebody here tell me one thing that you know about raptors or one thing that actually defines them as a group of birds? Help me out. Ooh, wonderful. He said forward facing eyes, wonderful bin binocular vision. And you hit the first thing that's so important about raptors is their excellent vision. These birds have such phenomenal vision that they can see th objects very small at great distances. I have with me today. I have a skull from a great horned owl. And you'll notice those forward set eyes, very large, oops, sorry about the feedback, um, very large eyes, and these birds depend on their excellent sense of vision to be able to see their dinner, go down and grab it. Remember, these are predators. They are carnivores. They can't eat the berries or the seeds. It's only meat. And let me ask you, is it okay today if I were to feed a few of the birds? That's okay. And also, is it okay if I maybe were to feed one of these birds a whole mouse and see what it does with it? Okay. All right, we'll do that today. Excellent. Yeah, you guys got the good seats, huh? <laughs> so, um, forward set eyes, excellent vision. That's one extreme characteristic of a raptor. Help me out. What else? Way in the back in the cheap seats. Help me out. What he said is they have very sharp claws to grab their prey with. And I, of course, brought some with me. And raptor's feet are so special, we give them a special name that we call talons. Raptors grab their dinner with their feet. All right, kids. Who grabs their dinner with their feet? Any of you? A few of you. Don't go home today and say the raptor guy told you to eat like a raptor to grab your dinner with. So, your feet. Raptors grab their dinner with their feet. Four toes total. You'll notice the difference between these two talons. The one in my right hand, of course, is from a snowy owl. The one in my left hand is from a red-tailed hawk. Notice the owl has feathers. No, it's not fur. It's just very wispy feathers. And these feathers go all the way down the toes, and that is a characteristic of owls. You'll notice the hawk lacks those feathers, and we'll talk about why that is in a few minutes. We got eyesight, we got talons, we have one more thing, and then we got to see a bird. What's the last characteristic of a raptor? Ooh, help me out, do you know? What do you think? Ooh, feathers. Feathers are very important. Feathers are the number one defining characteristic of birds, and if you're a bird, you have feathers. It's that easy. Birds are the only animal on planet Earth that has feathers. So feathers, super important. How about one more thing about raptors? I'll give you a hint. Right here. Help me out. Yeah, tell me about the beak. What's the shape? Nice job. It's pointed. It's hooked. Every raptor has a hooked beak. No matter if we're talking about an eagle. A hawk, an owl, a falcon, a vulture, a harrier, an osprey, a kite. There's some other raptors as well in the world. But everyone has a hooked beak. If I were to turn this over, and I know those of you in the back may be difficult to see this, but you'll notice no teeth are in a bird's beak or in its mouth. These birds want to be lightweight in order to fly, and so teeth are heavy. And what a great adaptation if you're a bird is not to have teeth. Now the tool is, of course, your beak and the shape of that beak. That hook on a raptor? Think of it today like a steak knife. They grab their dinner with their feet, they rip it, tear it, cut it with their beak. Of course, if that gray horned owl catches a mouse, sure, they can swallow it down in one big gulp. If they catch that rabbit, nah, they need to actually rip off pieces to be able to start digesting it. So to be a raptor, it's as simple as this. A bird that has a hooked beak, good eyes, and talons. That's a raptor. So as the wonderful introduction said that we are from the University of Minnesota Raptor Center. We are a rehabilitation center on the St. Paul campus of the university as part of the College of Veterinary Medicine, meaning that we are a hospital that takes in injured or sick birds of prey. 
Every single year we get between seven and 800 raptors that need our help. Our veterinarians are literally the best in the world that can fix up these raptors, send them back into the wild. It's a little under 50% get to do just that, go back to the wild. That's a huge percentage based on the injuries that we see. Most of the injuries are human caused. Some of them are natural injuries as well. Now the birds behind me may be wondering, Adam, why do you have these birds? How did you get them? These birds all came into our hospital. Our veterinarians fixed them up the best they could, but they are determined non-releasable due to their injuries. Because they can't go into the wild, they need a place to live, we give them food, we give them housing, but they have to teach. And on federal and state permits, we're allowed to travel. We do about a, over 1,100 programs a year. We teach about 200,000 people a year, and they are the ambassadors there, the teachers. And so these birds are with us because they can't go into the wild. They've been trained to be in situations like this. They are still wild animals. I do want you to know they are not pets in any way. And because of that, I will be wearing a glove. That's for certainly my safety, but also for them to be having a nice place to perch. All right, with that said, you know where we come from, you know the work that we do. Let's take a look at this very first raptor. This bird that you're about to see is one of the most common raptors in all of North America. And I promise you this, on your drive home or this weekend while you're driving around town, I promise you if you're looking for them, you'll see them. Let's take a look and determine if you can determine what type of raptor this is. So this here, as I mentioned, is one of the most common raptors. It has a nickname, though, that a lot of people know it by the term chicken hawk, but in fact, they're really not eating chickens, and maybe unless you leave your chicken coop open. But this bird, it has a more common name, and anybody want to identify it? How about orange shirt? I'm impressed, nice ID. Yeah, this here is a red-tailed hawk. Now, of course, they get their name from their beautiful rusty red tail, but the secret is, is they don't get that until they are one year old. When they hatch out of their egg, they look very different as an immature bird, and that difference can certainly be seen in the tail. Now, this here is a full grown-up, as you can see, and when birds leave the nest, they are full grown-up size. This bird is five years old. We know that because of when she came into our rehabilitation clinic. And I will mention her story in just a moment. Now, she'll come back up. This here is called a bait. The term goes back to the term in falconry. And these birds can leave the glove either to go somewhere or to avoid something, and that's what that behavior is. Now, being a red-tailed hawk, you are an open area hunter. That's why we're seeing them is because you and I have made habitat for them. This bird is found along roadsides, along farmer fields, and they do quite well because they like to sit up high, scan the ground looking for their dinner, and their favorite food is of course mice. Shrews, moles, voles, they'll eat ground squirrels. They will certainly take snakes, they will take small rabbits, they will take other small mammals, even birds if they can catch them. Now this one is actually more of a soaring hawk. You really do have two types of hawks, budios, which are wide-winged soaring, and you have occipiters, which are thin wings and very fast. This bird is going to be scanning the ground looking for their mouse dinner and then flying down to pounce on it. I really thank these birds when I see them, and the job that they have in the environment, extremely important. They are a rodent specialist, and they are helping to control rodent populations. Without them, we would have mice everywhere. It is said that a red-tailed hawk like this out in the wild could eat a thousand mice a year. Well, they're doing an important job. Now, this here is a female. This red-tailed hawk is a five-year-old that came to us from southern Minnesota. Somebody found her injured on the side of a road and brought her to our hospital. What they determine is that she is actually blind in her left eye. And a bird that relies on their eyesight to catch their dinner, she would never be able to catch food and so she is actually gonna be living with us due to that left eye blindness. You may look at both eyes and determine they look the same, but our veterinarians are the best in the world. We have special equipment. We have the ophthalmologist through the College of Veterinary Medicine, and I can even read her behavior to tell me that she cannot see out of that eye. So she will live with us the rest of her life. In the wild, these guys would live about 15. In captivity, they could easily live into their 30s. And again, she is just five years old. Now, how do I know that this is a girl? 
not the color of the bird, it actually is based on the size. In the raptors, either the girls or the boys are bigger and it's actually only one way and I'd like to ask you that. Maybe raise your hand now if you think in the raptors the boys are bigger than girls. What do you think, boys? Bigger than girls? Okay, let's try the opposite. I see some people maybe shaking their heads. Um, who thinks the girls are bigger than boys? Okay, all right. In the raptor world, the boys are smaller than the girls, and it can be up to a third smaller. So with that said, I did weigh her before we came here, and I would like to determine what her weight is, and I need your help. So I promise you she will not care if I tell you her weight. <laughs> but if you think she weighs between one and five pounds, raise your hand now, one and five. Okay, how about a five to 10? Okay, how about 10 to 15? 15 to 20? I wish I could hold 50 to 100 pounds at the end of my hand for the last 10 minutes, but this bird, being lightweight, mostly hollow bones, no teeth and lots of feathers, she is big at three and three quarter pounds. I only saw a few hands that fell within that range. Remember, these birds have to be lightweight in order to fly. I would love to take a couple questions on red-tailed hawks, the raptor center, anything goes. How fast do they get? You know, that's an interesting thing. I'm always, I always have a tough time determining miles per hour, how fast these birds are. Um, what I can tell you is they're, they're more of a soaring slow bird where the next bird I'm going to show you is actually extremely fast. And we have clocked this bird. Researchers do know how fast it goes. Um, Occipiter hawks are faster than those bootios. So I just, just think slower, slow soaring. You'll have to Google it this weekend about miles per hour and I, I, I can't tell you. Um, yes, yeah, sir. That's a great question. Do they mate for life? We've heard that a lot with bald eagles. We hear that with peregrine falcons. We hear that with lots of different hawk species. What we like to say is that they mate to a territory. Um, what that tells you, when I hear mate for life, it sounds like, well, if some, one doesn't make it back to the nest, well, they'll stop mating, the other one will stop mating. Not the case. Both will come to the nest. If they've been successful, they can definitely have another clutch of eggs. There can be territorial battles, a younger or more aggressive bird can come in and, and take over that nest and that mate. So we like to say it's the territory what's important. Um, there's a first time ever reported in Minneapolis was a peregrine falcon that had a nest um, on one building and they had a, four chicks with one female. He went, a mo he went a block and a half around the corner, had another nest with another female and four chicks. He successfully killed enough food for eight chicks, two females, and himself. He was a killing machine. Some people say that the he mates for life. Well, sure he does, but he can just go around the corner and have another nest as well. How does she go blind in her eye? That's a great question. She actually got blind from a virus called West Nile virus. And as this virus progresses, and if her body doesn't fight it off, it can cert first sort of causes what we see as sort of fatigue, tiredness, that kind of um, uh, condition. Next, it can actually attack the eye and cause blindness, which is in the case of her. If it prolongs and her body still isn't fighting it, it can cause seizures and death. And birds can get that from mosquitoes, and that's her story. Yeah.